Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Tech Talks. Today, we're going to explore the working principle of a 2-input TTL NAND gate with a totem pole output. We'll break it down step by step, making it easy for everyone to understand. As we delve into the working principle, I'll be using some visual aids to help illustrate the concepts. On the screen, you'll see diagrams and schematics that will make it easier to follow along. Feel free to pause and rewind if you need more time to absorb the information. So, grab your thinking caps and let's get started. On your screen, you'll see the symbol of a NAND gate. Let's break down the truth table to understand how this gate behaves under different input conditions. As you know, the output of a NAND gate is 1 when one of the inputs is 0. And when both inputs are 1, the output becomes 0. This simple logic forms the basis for various digital applications. Now, let's analyze the circuit. Here is the circuit diagram of a 2-input NAND gate. T1 is a multi-emitter transistor, and the inputs are connected to the two emitters of transistor T1. The collector of T1 is connected to transistor T2. The emitter of T2 is then connected to the base of transistor T3. In comparison to standard TTL logic, where the goal is to reduce current and power consumption, we employ a totem pole configuration using transistor T4 followed by a diode. This diode serves to prevent the simultaneous switching of transistors T3 and T4. The use of this diode will be further explored in this simulation. The output is taken from this point and I've added a test point to display the output voltage. An LED is connected at the output as a load, serving to display the status of the output. Here, we utilize NPN bipolar junction transistors. When the inputs are 00, zero or 01 or 10, at least one of the base, emitter junctions of transistor T1 is forward biased. Consequently, current flows through the emitter of T1, and there's not enough voltage to trigger transistors T2 and T3. Transistor T1's base collector junction is reverse biased, and T1 is in active region. As a result, both T2 and T3 are turned off. With T2 and T3 in the off state, there is enough voltage to trigger transistor T4 in the diode. Consequently, current flows through transistor T4 in the diode. The output voltage is high, representing logic 1. Since an LED is connected as a load, current flows, causing the LED to glow. Now we can check another condition. When both inputs are 1, the base emitter junction of T1 is reverse biased, and the base collector of T1 is forward biased. As a result, there is a current flow through the T1 collector, triggering transistor T2. Since T2 is on, the emitter current of T2, in turn, triggers transistor T3. As both T2 and T3 are on, there is not enough base voltage to trigger transistor T4 on the diode. Since the base emitter of T4 is in series with the diode, there should be at least 1.4 volt to forward bias the base emitter of T4 in the diode. Therefore, T4 is off and the diode is not conducting. Hence, the output voltage is low, representing logic 0, and the LED is off. Now, we have our circuit in place and it's working as expected. But what happens if we decide to remove the diode? Let's find out. We remove the diode and observe that, now only a 0.7 volt trigger is required to activate the base emitter PN junction of T4. As a result, T4 turns on, leading to high current across both T4 and T3. The increase in current inevitably leads to higher power consumption. This scenario is less than ideal, as efficient power management is crucial in electronic circuits. As we can see, without the diode, the circuit becomes more sensitive to triggering, and power consumption shoots up. This is a clear indication that T4 and T3 are switching simultaneously, creating conditions that are not favorable for efficient operation. In conclusion, the removal of the diode has a significant impact on the circuit's behavior, leading to higher power consumption. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content on electronics and circuitry. Feel free to leave your questions and comments below. Until next time, happy experimenting!